Greetings and welcome to part two on set theory, which is part of the larger series for students to learn or relearn the O-level syllabus during the coronavirus outbreak. This episode will be covering Venn diagrams and will specially feature the Avengers. The success criteria for today will be for students to be able to construct and populate Venn diagrams, shade a given region of a Venn diagram, and solve problems using Venn diagrams. Named after the mathematician John Venn, who first introduced this diagram, Venn diagrams are used to represent sets as regions, and they are used to visualize the logical relationship between sets. So let's begin today's lesson by first building ourselves a Venn diagram. And what better universal set to use than the OG Avengers from the Marvel Cinematic Universe? So let's first create a universe. We need to ring fence this universe by first drawing a box. And we're going to label this box with the universal set. This is represented by the Greek letter Psi. Next, I'm going to populate this universe with the six original Avengers from the MCU. Of course, just having six Avengers floating around aimlessly in space is quite meaningless. So let's make this a bit more exciting by introducing a set. We'll let set A be the set of ordinary humans. So since Hulk is a gamma irradiated, Captain America has taken the super soldier serum and Thor is the god of thunder, only Iron Man, Black Widow and Hawkeye qualify to be in set A. So let's rearrange them. We can also say that those three elements, Captain America, Thor and Hulk, are not inside set A, so they are in A prime. Let's introduce a second set. We'll let set B be the people responsible for building Ultron. That would be Iron Man and the Hulk. So let's rearrange these elements to better fit these two sets. This Venn diagram that we have built essentially divides the six Avengers across four regions. Iron Man is the only Avenger who qualifies to be in both set A and set B. This is the region of A intersect B. Captain America and Thor are in neither set A nor in set B. Hulk is the only Avenger who is in set B but not in set A. And Hawkeye and Black Widow are the only ones who are in set A but not in set B. Hopefully, from this example, you can appreciate how a Venn diagram can be used for classifying objects, how it surfaces common properties between different elements, and the logical relationship between elements and sets. After that marvellous example, let's use this checkpoint to test your own understanding. Complete the Venn diagram on the right to illustrate the information that you have been given. Pause the video here to give this question a good try. Let's go through the answers. What we can first do is list out all the elements. So for the universe, that would be the numbers 0 to 9. For set A, only four of those numbers are prime numbers. They are 2, 3, 5, and 7. And 12 has six factors. They are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12, but 12 is too big, so we will exclude that one. If we compare set A and set B, we can see that the elements 2 and 3 is common. So we can move them into the region where A intersects B. What is left in set A is the elements 5 and 7. So these will go into the region that is in A but not in B. And what is left in set B are the elements 1, 4 and 6. And these will go in the region of B that is not in A. Discounting the seven elements that we've already inserted into the Venn diagram, we still have three more elements unaccounted for. Those last three elements will be placed within the universe but outside of the regions of A and B. So this will be the completed Venn diagram. Did you get the answer? On to success criteria 2. We're now looking at how to shade a given region of a Venn diagram. Let's run through some simple shading first. 
If you're asked to shade the region of A, just simply shade everything inside A. Likewise, if you're asked to shade the region B, just shade everything inside B. If the problem is to shade A union B, you shade everything inside A together with everything inside B. If you're asked to shade A intersect B, that intersection is the common region between circle A and circle B, so you just shade the middle part as shown. Why don't you have a go? Try this shading. How would you shade the region which is represented by A intersect B prime? Let me give you a hint. What does A have in common with the region not in B? Pause the video here and give this question a good try. Let's go through the solution. A way to scaffold your thinking is to consider A and B prime separately. So what I'm going to do is to split my Venn diagram. So we're going to do two different Venn diagrams and combine it later. So for the one on the left, I'm going to shade the region of A. And for the one on the right, I'm going to shade the region B prime. And that is everything outside of B. So to perform an intersection, we need to look at the shadings of A and B prime and ask ourselves, is there any areas that are shaded on both diagrams? And the answer is yes. Just this crescent-shaped portion that I've picked. That is the only region that is shaded on both A and B prime. So we can combine the Venn diagrams together and form the final answer. So this is the final shading. Did you get the answer? Let's look at some special relationships that Venn diagrams highlight. The first is the subset relationship. From this Venn diagram, B is a subset of A. This means that all the elements that belong to B also belong to A. However, not every element that belongs to A belongs to B. In biology, the example would be lions and mammals. Every lion is a mammal, but not every mammal is a lion. So lions are a subset of mammals. The other special case is the disjoint set. A and B are disjoint sets if they have no common elements. For example, in chemistry, the set of alkali metals is disjointed from the set of noble gases. There are no elements that belong to both groups. So let's apply Venn diagrams for solving problems. Say I have a class of 30 students. 15 students are able to play the piano and 12 of them are able to play the violin. Given that 10 students do not play either instruments, how many students are able to play both the piano and the violin? How would you tackle this problem? So let's start with a Venn diagram. I'm going to let P be the set of students who play the piano and B be the set of students who play the violin. Instead of populating this Venn diagram with elements, we are going to label the cardinality of each region. The easiest region here to label is the region outside P and V, and that would be 10, the number of students who do not play either instruments. If we let the number of students who play both instruments be x, then the number of students who play the piano only would be 15 minus x, and the number of students who play the violin only would be 12 minus x. By adding up the cardinality of the four regions, we should get 30 which is the total number of students. And by solving this equation, we get x equals to 7 and conclude that 7 students are able to play both the piano and the violin. Now it's time to challenge yourself. Check your own understanding with checkpoint 3. Pause the video here and give this question a good try. Now for the solution. This is a problem that challenges us to consider the extreme cases. So once again, let's begin with the Venn diagram, where the universe consists of all 35 members. Set P are the pool users and set G are the gym users. To maximize the intersection between the pool users and the gym users, we can fit the set of G inside P. This will give us a maximum value of 13. This occurs when G is a subset of P. 
On the other hand, to minimize the intersection of the two groups, we can have the two groups to have as little as possible to do with each other. And this is done by making the two sets disjoint sets. This allows us to make the minimum possible number to be zero. You have to be very careful here and check that the sum of the elements in sets P and sets G, which is 13 plus 19, is less than the total number of members, which is 35. For further practice of Venn diagrams, I've attached a link below for a worksheet for extra practice and the solution sheet will also be included for you to self-check your answers when you are done with the worksheet. Finally, let's go back to our success criteria. Are you now able to construct and populate Venn diagrams? Are you able to shape a given region of a Venn diagram? And are you able to solve problems using the Venn diagrams? If you have still any concerns about any of the success criteria, please leave a comment in the comment section below. We have come to the end of part two. This is the end for the O-level syllabus portion of set theory. Hopefully I can find some time to continue this set theory series. And if I do, the plan for part three would be to introduce Boolean algebra. This would be helpful for students interested in computer science. Anyway, thank you for your kind attention today and have a great day of learning.